We're here today to announce the filing uh, in federal court of a lawsuit that cha challenges the constitutionality of the war against Libya. The Constitution of the United States, Article 1, Section 8, makes it abundantly clear that no president can go to war unilaterally without the permission of the Congress. Uh, this lawsuit also is challenging a policy that permits the president to uh, commit the United States to a war under the authority of NATO. Uh, similarly, we're challenging policies that would allow the United States to be committed to war uh, under the authority of the United Nations. Uh, what we are saying in both cases is that it is necessary to come to Congress and that uh, neither NATO nor the UN trumps the United States Constitution. This is, as Dennis said, a very, very important day for the American people. And I believe those that wrote the Constitution would be standing with us today, quite frankly. Those who drafted the Constitution must be very disappointed in how the Congress and the executive branch have evolved over the past 25 years. Today, as Dennis said just a moment ago, this is an opportunity to rectify a direction that America's been going without the support of the Constitution. This is a clear and absolute illegal war. It has been from the beginning, as quite frankly, uh, wars have been in the past, but we're dealing with this one now. We have to deal with this now. We have to assert our powers, and if we don't, if we don't step forward now, if the courts don't assist us now, if our colleagues don't assist us now, eff effectively they said, you are a neutered branch of government with no powers in this arena, and that cannot happen. Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. In Washington on Thursday, June 16th, President Obama delivered a 32-page report to John Boehner and Congress justifying the American involvement in the Libyan war. That had been demanded by many members of Congress, and then John Boehner asked for it, because Congress is supposed to declare war, not the White House. And there's a 60-day term where which a president can in initiate some actions, and then a 30-day extension, and that's about to run out. So many members of Congress are not only saying that this had to be authorized by Congress, but not being so is illegal. A couple of congressmen, Dennis Kucinich and a Republican colleague named Walter Jones, have actually launched a lawsuit asking a federal judge to suspend or prevent the war, American involvement in the war continuing, uh, without congressional approval. Now joining us in Washington to dissect all of this is Bruce Fine. Bruce was uh, Associate Deputy Attorney General under President Reagan. He's also author of the book American Empire Before the Fall. Currently, he's a resident scholar for the Turkish Coalition of America, a co-counsel for the Turkish American Legal Defense Fund. Thanks for joining us, Bruce. Thank you for inviting me. And I should also add, you've, you've worked with and have been advisor to uh, Ron Paul in the past. Uh, so, first of all, what, what is your, give, give us a first an overview of what's happening on this in Washington, and then we'll kind of dig into your point of view. All right, first we need to understand the Constitution and the War Powers Resolution, which uh, needs completeness. One, every single member of the Constitutional Convention, every single author of the Federalist Papers, everyone involved in creating the Constitution agreed that only the Congress had the authority to initiate war. It was viewed as the crown jewel of the Constitution because the Founding Fathers had witnessed from the beginning of time, executive branch, monarchs, emperors, and otherwise, initiating war for personal aggrandizement, obtaining power, because during wartime, the executive gets the secrecy, the taxes, the appointments, the glory, these footprints in the sands of time. And with that understanding of human nature, every single founding father explicitly stated, only Congress can initiate war, one man, one group, cannot initiate war, and that is the preservation of our republic. So this is not a question where there's any room for debate about what the Constitution means. It is as clear as the provision for 35 years of age being the minimum for occupying the now, White House. You do you recognize or agree, then, that President Obama, at least for that 60 days and then the 30-day extension, uh, could he, is that portion legal so far no. up until no, we hit the 90 days? No, you, I think that it's, that reflects a misunderstanding or 
a non-reading of the War Powers Resolution. It's really important to actually read documents before you interpret them, like reading a book before you write a book review. And if you read the War Powers Resolution, it does not provide an automatic 60-day window for the president to initiate war, and then Congress has to come back and authorize it, and the president has 30 days to withdraw troops. Section 2 explicitly states three conditions and three only where the president can use the military offensively. One, a declaration of war. Two, specific statutory authorization for war. Or three, a response to an actual attack on the United States of America. There is no 60-day window. Those are the three conditions and three conditions only when the president can respond with any offensive use of the military. In addition, it says, once the military is deployed, after 60 days, the president has to come back and get another congressional authorization if he wants to continue the hostilities beyond that period of time. However, he is given 30 days after the 60 to withdraw the troops to ensure they're not exposed recklessly to danger. That's what the War Powers Resolution says. And the president violated the War Powers Resolution when he went into Libya. He violated the War Powers Resolution when he obtained no congressional authorization after 60 days. And he's violating it right okay, now. So, so, Bruce, the, 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 the Obama administration would say that the reasons why he went in uh, without initial without congressional approval it partly was the issue of urgency, that Benghazi was uh, under threat. There's there might, there, let, let me, hold on, hold on, let me finish the question. Oh. Oh. Hang on, Bruce, Bruce, hang on. Bruce, let me finish the question. So that Benghazi was under threat, the, uh, there could have been a massacre in Benghazi, there are many other countries agreed with that, the UN resolution gets passed. So that initial involvement was dictated by the urgency of the situation. Is that constitutional? No, of course not. There's nothing in the Constitution that says, well, you don't have to comply if there's an urgency. The urgency that was recognized was an actual or imminent attack on the United States where the president could respond, like Pearl Harbor. That and what the president has said in providing those excuses is a confession that he's flouted the Constitution. The War Powers Resolution doesn't say if you have an urgency and you think there's going to be a massacre, then you can go ahead and act unilaterally. There are no exceptions. If you don't like it, you can amend the Constitution. You can amend the War Powers Resolution. You just don't by decree say, no, I think there's an emergency. I'll flout the law. That is the end of the rule of law when that becomes Okay, so he submitted this 32-page document, and if I understand it correctly, because I have not had a chance to review the 32 pages, but my understanding is the uh, White House argument is that the action now is so limited, just air support, some logistical support, uh, that it's not really involved in a, quote, full-scale war. There's some definition they've uh, said to sort of reduce level of participation in hostilities. So does that not uh, so, uh, persuade you? No, I think I can summon the administration's own Secretary of Defense. Mr. Gates, who testified before Congress, yeah, it would be an act of war if anyone shot a Tomahawk missile into New York City. And we've done a lot more than that in Libya. Just think of how inconceivable it would be in the United States not to treat another country that's doing to us what we are doing to Libya as not war. And moreover, it creates this paradox. If we're not at war, then our killings are murder because it's war that makes killings legal. So they're confessing to war crimes or murder if this is not war. Now, what do you make of the uh, John Boehner's position and some of the leadership of the Republicans and some of the other Republicans involved in this? Because many of them supported uh, President Bush's war in Iraq, which most international lawyers consider to have been illegal. Uh, it's a bit rich, their position on this, don't you think? Well, I think the richest position is the Vice President, Joe Biden. In 2006, Seven. Mr. Biden, in his presidential campaign, stated unequivocally, if George W. Bush went to war in Iran without congressional authority, he would insist on the impeachment and removal of the president from office because going to war without congressional authority is an impeachable offense. 2007, 2008, on the campaign stump, Hillary Clinton and Mr. Obama both stating unequivocally, only Congress can authorize the initiation of war. President Bush cannot go to war in Iran without congressional authorization. So what is rich? Now they are in power, and they are doing the opposite, the exact opposite of what they said. They came into office with a fraud because war is the most important decision any government makes. And those individuals, Biden, 
Clinton, Obama lied to us. Okay, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not presenting any argument against you on that. I think the facts on that are clear. Uh, but John Boehner, many of the Republican leadership were, were gung-ho on every uh, move by the Bush administration, never critiqued any of the illegality of that administration. I guess the question I'm asking you more, because I think what I just said you probably agree with, we've, I've, we've talked before, what's going on inside the Republican Party that would push people like Boehner to take a position on this? Because I, I, I really doubt he would have without uh, enormous pressure from inside his own party. Make the two observations. Number one, at least President Bush did get congressional authorization to use force in Afghanistan. It's called the authorization to use military force. And he did get a, a statute, the Iraqi War Resolution, that passed Congress, voted upon and approved by Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton, that authorized what he did in Iraq. Now, he violated many other provisions of law that caused me to cause for, call for his impeachment, like the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act or committing torture claiming that uh, if he's conducting war, he can commit torture. But at least on the war issue, he did get Congress to act. Now, why is Boehner doing what he's doing? Because there was a more acute attack on President Obama in the form of the Kucinich Amendment that would have required all military force to, be, to cease 14 days after the resolution. And in order to co-opt or to blunt the force of the Kucinich resolution, he offered his own. He was totally responsive. Without the Kucinich resolution, Mr. Boehner would have done nothing. Because we are living in a, an era of empire where the entire political culture is infected with this demand for domination for the sake of domination. Make us risk-free. We can go anywhere in the world. And it's both Republican and Democratic parties, and it's throughout the entire political culture. And that's why a president can commit impeachable offenses with impunity, as long as he says, I'm doing it in national security purpose. I'm doing it for benevolent reasons. It's the idea of American exceptionalism means anything that we touch turns to gold. You know, we'll take civilizations that haven't had democracy in 5,000 years and make them Democrats, you know? And is this arrogance that, in, that is, is what I consider the, the corruption and the contamination of our whole politics? Thanks today. very much for joining us, Bruce. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.